Well, welcome to Frampton Park. It's great to see you all. Um, it's very simple, really. You haven't come to, to listen to me. You've come to listen to Paul. Um, the, the facts of life are that uh, when we looked for our new manager, we wanted somebody that had uh, experience at this level, success at this level, huge ambition, had the personality uh, to take on what is a large football club at this level, and move us forward. And the, uh, and the common word between the football club and Paul is ambition. I think we've got the right man at the right time at the right football club. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to him, Paul Cook. Thanks Paul. very much, Chairman. Thank you. And, and trust me, once he starts, you will not get the microphone back. <laughs> I can't believe he stopped that quick. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to speak? Yeah. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Obviously, just like to thank you know the Chairman, he and the rest of the board, you know, for us showing the faith to come and ask me to join such a great club. I think when you're in management, you always want to be ambitious and you want to go as far as you can in the game. It's a very difficult game to manage in, in today's climate. You know, I think Portsmouth's problems for years have been documented well. And my job's now to make sure that the documentation's about winning and bringing success to the club. Eventually, when the dust settles, it'll be my job and the staff's job to achieve that goal for the club and the fans and for everyone. And what we can guarantee is that we will leave no stone unturned in our efforts to do that. Okay, lovely, thank you. So, have we had anybody who would like to kick us off with a question? Yes, I'm now. What's your biggest fear? Biggest fear? Being late home today for me, yeah. missus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any fear. I don't feel it, I didn't feel it as a player. I don't see why you should fear anything as a manager. You know, you get backed well by people higher above you. You know, the game's about players. I remember in my playing career, every time I ever come to Fratton Park, Portsmouth team was always filled with match winners and people who could get the crowd on the edge of the seat. And for whatever reason, you know, them days, have, days haven't been so, so frequent. You know, the recruitment will be important in the players we bring in. That can not only, you know, do themselves justice, but do the club justice as well. And, you know, supporters don't half relate well to players. And that's the most important relationship at a club sometimes. Thank you, yeah. One there and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick. Oh, me, Sorry, yeah, go go right. Hi, um, Paul, uh, you've already stated promotion, mm -hmm. everything like that. There's a high expectation, fan expectation here. Can you live up to it? I don't know, I'll tell you then about May. Yes, <laughs> I don't know. But you've already set the bar, haven't you? At the promotion, I think February. you've got to, haven't you? I think if you set any type of bar lower than that, you're accepting second best. I think when you get spoke about the biggest club in the division, I think the most important thing is that you conduct yourself and act like it. We are the biggest club in this division. It doesn't give us no divine right to win it or to be promoted, but the most important thing is that myself, my staff and the players believe that the, the right hard work on the training ground and the right desire to see the club be successful that we can achieve it and I believe that we will achieve it next season, yeah. Yes. Hi, Paul David from Sam FM. Hey David. Uh, what, what made you want to take the job, you know, why did you want to come down here? Why did you want to come down here? Yeah. I think it's simple in football, you, you want to be at a club where you think that you're going to be successful. You know, when I joined Chesterfield, I was very, very happy with everything that went on with the club. You know, and I felt that in my time at the club, I was at a great club in Chesterfield. I was, in my opinion, very popular with the supporters and everyone there. But unfortunately, all journeys come to an end and I come to an end. You know, so when you're looking for a new challenge, People automatically think that people move up a ladder. I think when you look at clubs, every club's in a division for a reason, but it doesn't mean that's where they're going to finish. If you look at Portsmouth Football Club today, where can we go? I do believe we can go a long way. You know, my job is not, you know, after today, I won't be talking about it anymore. My job will be to show the supporters on the pitch and in our matches that we're going to deliver. No problem. Yes, You've taken Chesterfield out of the the qualities that are needed in a team this Every, if, if there was another manager sitting up here, he'd say different to me. I just believe that when we go to a football match, we want to be entertained. I think if you've got any city, town, when people work hard, Saturday's the biggest day in the week because it's the day of football. And I want to put a team on the pitch that plays good, attractive football with a desire to win. You know, I got told when I took over at um, Chesterfield with Liam Richardson, don't try and pass your way out of League Two. Well, we did. We're going to do the same at Portsmouth. We're going to play good football and we're going to do our best to get out of the league too. Thank you. Yes, yeah. um, Mark, how many applied for this job and how many did you interview? Um, it, it whittled down from initially 150 
uh, went to our first ball meeting after we had the list, the ball considered it, um, was left with a, what I would call a serious list of 40 to 50. Um, but pretty soon at that very that very first ball meeting to discuss the new manager, Paul Paul's name was on, on everyone's lips and, and from then on in really he was the, the main target that we went after. And what kind of calibre of applicants are we talking about? Pretty good. Uh, quite a few from high divisions, um, even a couple from the championship. So very, very high standard this time around. Thank you. Yeah, any any other questions we've got this day? How would you describe the your management style Paul, generally? Paul, oh, good question. I think, you know, I think if you I think the biggest thing about Saturday afternoons is you only see the product of the hard work that goes on during the week. I think that's the stage where you play on and if you're doing the right work from Monday to Friday, Saturday's like your theatre. You know, I would demand that the players come in. You know, we must be fit. We must work hard during the week. You know, lads must practice. I think if you look at any footballer today, there's not many that can't improve. You know, my job will be with the rest of my staff when we've recruited and everything's gone through like that. But to demand hard work, you know, because ability alone won't get anybody anywhere. You know, we must have a... And then what I'd like to think is I'll give the lads the right sort of freedom to go on the pitch and play, that the belief that I back them. You know, the support, I think it's so important that you feel that love on a pitch, that your manager's not going to be rating you. I know sometimes people see me carry on on the sidelines like a bit of a lunatic, you know, but it's just because I've got so much belief in the players on the pitch. You know, so I'd like to think one of my best qualities would be man management. Yeah. Andrew, Andrew Stilwell. Um, Hi, Andrew. Obviously, you're um, coming from Chester and Boston. Are there any players who are looking particularly um, fond of working with or? No, not really. Didn't like that answer, did you? <laughs> <laughs> It's not right to speak about other people's players. I never will as a manager. It's so important that we show a bit of class at this club. Pardon? Sorry? Oh, all of them. Yeah. Oh, no, without a shadow of a doubt. Sorry, mate, I got that yeah. question wrong. Yeah. yeah, all of them. It's a southern accent. I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> you got back at me quick, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> no, it's important the lads feel that when a new manager comes in, that you shouldn't have fear when you go into the job. You know, if you, if you have a fear in your job, it means you're not doing it well. You know, if you're good at your job, you shouldn't have no fear. So all the players that we work with now will have a clean slate. You know, it's about the club moving forward now. It's about not continually looking back. It's, it's the next day is the most important one for me. Okay. Yeah. Any uh, any other questions at this stage? Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. What do you think of the facilities here at Portsmouth? Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Really good. Just is it's it's got so much character, hasn't it? The place it's it's you know nowadays with the modern stadiums we lose the character, you know. And he, yeah, I'd like a bigger, newer one, but we're not getting that. <laughs> so. I just think you know it's a match day feel, isn't it? And even when I visited even playing days here, you know when you come in through the pubs, you see all the Portsmouth fans outside the pubs. You know it's a big day. You know I think the most important thing about stadiums like this is that we get it vibrant. You know the atmosphere can actually intimidate the opposition. You know and that's important that we try our best to make that happen again. We have in fact told him the new Tesco building is a new stadium being erected, <laughs> but I mean, apart from that, it's all sort of come out early, isn't it? <laughs> do, do you think that having 15,000 people in League 2 can be intimidating for the home players sometimes as well? Is that something you've got to be, you've got to be careful of? Or wary of? I, I think what happens with any club is that the scales of balance will go one way or the other. If we're not doing well, we don't like playing here. If we're doing great, we've got players who love the atmosphere. We've just got to concentrate on recruiting the team, putting them on the pitch and making them play. Does that mean you've got to get a special mentality? No, not really. When you do well, fans clap, yeah, and we all like it. When you give it away every time, they boo you and we don't. <laughs> don't give it away. <laughs> yeah. Any others? But one, as, as a football person yourself, what other football people have inspired you or, or do you admire? I think uh, for... for you know, I'm a Liverpool fan. I'm a massive Liverpool fan. I've travelled to a lot of games all my life. I've been down here to Portsmouth on coaches to games. I know what it's like to support your team. And I think sometimes now with the modern game, we're losing that so quickly. You know, we're creating an environment now where the supporters stroke whatever relationship between clubs and if players and supporters is gone. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important thing is that we do our best to make our supporters proud of us. And I've always said, even to be humble, you don't have to win to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. You get clapped off by your supporters after they see the right amount of effort. Yeah. You know, and I think at the end of any game, if your supporters clap you off, you've done okay. You know, so from my point of view, 
you know, I was lucky that I watched all the great Liverpool teams, you know, and all them teams, in my opinion, had all good players, but the modern game's changed now. And I think so, you must be yourself, even as a manager, you must take bits and pieces of what you like from people. You know, but the most important thing is giving lads, and we just touched on it with the last question, the confidence to go and play. You know, if you could bottle and sell confidence in football, you've cracked it. Thank you. All right, last, last chance for any questions at this stage. Ian, just about the approach to Chesterfield. And it came obviously when they were in the playoffs and, and they weren't happy about it. Have you got anything to say about the way you, you approach Paul? We did it professionally. Um, I've, I've read the comments. I'd rather not comment about other football clubs. Um, I wish Chesterfield, their chairman, their supporters, all the best, and the new manager, Dean Saunders, for the future. Um, so uh, I think that you probably take the rights and the wrongs from it, from the fact that that's the first comment we've made about Chesterfield, as opposed to the 50 comments that have been made about this football club. Um, what I will do, in defence of my management team, we've done a wonderful job negotiating with Chesterfield to get Paul to come to the football club, is that uh, if everything was conducted as professional as the way that we've actually conducted our approach to Chesterfield, then football would be a cleaner place. That's all I'll say on the matter. Thank you. Okay, well, it, that kind of brings it to a close. And uh, what, what we'll do now is we, we, we'll set up one-to-one. -one. We want to try to do this so that we, we deal with people who've got tight deadline, deadlines, first of all. Again, just leave, leave for me to say that thank you all for coming. We really do appreciate you coming coming here. And also, I'd just like to say a thank you as well to the team of people that have put this um, this press conference together. There's a fantastic spread of food there, so please you know, make sure you have your lunch before you go as well. I'll certainly I will be in a minute. And uh, thank you. And now we'll hopefully get going and organise some... Some one to one. Yeah. Thank you.